Hi, I'm Emma. Right, I have a, had a lot of people recently asking me what to do about children who are struggling with spelling. Even if their reading might be at a reasonable level, um, they're worried about their spelling. So let me just show you what you can do for free using the SSP resources. Um, all of these that I'm just going to show you now, and this is only a fraction of what you can get for the Speech Sound Picks approach, except for those, you have to buy those because uh, they're from Reader, I think. But I use those if I had a budget of $20 in a, in a remote area to teach any child to read and spell. Um, as long as you understand the SSP approach, you can use these to support the approach and to teach any child. So I'll talk about those in a minute. They're about $8, $10, $12 perhaps each, depending on... Um, when you buy them, where you buy them. Um, but all of these things you can download from slideshare.net um, forward slash reading whisperer, or you can order one of these. It's a 16 gigabyte um, USB. Um, it's about $25 because the USB itself is $12 or $10 or something like that. Um, but it's got all the resources on it, but you can just go to SlideShare and download most of them anyway. And please do join us on Facebook because I'm constantly po posting links to new resources. Okay, so the Speech Sound Picks approach, um, I would definitely, if I was working with a child in a school or whatever, be doing Speedy SSP, which is a 15-minute brain training um, session. And it's split up into um, developing phonemic awareness. Uh, we've, we're linking the speech sounds um, in our oral language to the speech sound picks, which are the phonemes and the print. Um, there's a structure here of things to follow through, and it, um, regardless of whatever level, it, sorry, there's some, a structure here of what the children, what you go through, and this depends on the level of the child, the SSP level of the child, and then we've got visualization um, and symbol imagery. But that's another thing that I talked about another time. So spelling. Now every child must have one of these. That's the whole of the alphabetic code. In print, this is on an A4, so obviously it's quite small because we've got the whole of the English language on here. But this is what you're learning in SSP. So we're starting off on the green level, purple, yellow, blue. But have this because this is a good reference. Um, and it goes through the phonemes that we're teaching, that they're, where they're learning explicitly, first of all. S at, p, it, n. And we start off from the very beginning with the concept that we're developing phonemic awareness listen for our sound so let's listen for s, for example oh well here's one of the pictures of the speech sound s. so that's the terminology we use and that's mean that means that then it's not a shock when they're saying to them actually it's not the only picture for the s speech sound here are all of them oh, wait a minute we're going to take a picture so you're all going to say s, so you can take a picture of it are you ready can you all say s? so we're going to take a picture of it will show the children all of the representations for all of the speech sounds and if you find any that we've missed let me know um, these obviously do vary sometimes depending on your pronunciation so the children use the speech sound clouds in the classroom but you can vary them along with, with the children and they actually really enjoy that Although we're teaching explicitly, we're also helping children self-discover. So it's not a case of their learning phonics in isolation. They're actually doing this throughout the whole day, whether they're writing for science or history, whatever they're doing, whatever age they are. Um, but um, they build up, build up on their skills and concepts, all the skills and concepts that, are, that every child needs to be a, a fluent um, and effective reader and speller. Um, so that they're, they're actually reading for meaning and they're able to, to spell words without having to memorise them. So we're build up all the time with skills and concepts. But again, that's something I've talked about another time because um, I want to really concentrate on spelling. But 
you know, photocopy that, laminate it and whatever. The A3 ones, um, just download them, save them, put them on. To, if, if you haven't got the USB, um, then just save it yourself to each USB and send it to um, Officeworks or whatever. And they'll laminate everything in, um, in A3. A3. Okay, so we've got um, the green level. So this is the one that just focuses on the green level. So these are all the skills and concepts. It gives some ideas of some of the um, cards that you can laminate that the children use over and over again. The SSP doesn't have worksheets and things like that. It's not based on, it's based on individual learning. So worksheets are very difficult to use for differentiated teaching because you've got, you know, at least three or four different levels in your class. So, um, so this is the whole of the green level. It even shows where we've got the songs that show the children all of their variations in a meaningful context. So when we're showing them, it's not just this isn't the only picture for P. There's another one. And even when they're together, it's still only one that represents one speech sound. So we've got the, you know, songs um, and what have you. Same with N. Here are all the songs to show children so that they can actually see the N in different, in different, in a meaningful context. So Nick the Nat. Um, it's a lot better if we can actually do it in a poem and, and whatever and the children write their own as well. So at every level that goes from the green, purple, yellow, blue, we've got my helpful words which they build up. They start off with these and then as they know them they build up. These are high frequency words. There's a difference between high frequency helpful words and what you might think of as sight words or spelling words whatever. We've got my sound picks, and they're the ones in the level that they're learning. So if they were doing the green level and just doing sat pin they've got those in. And if they were just on the green level and doing, again, sat pin, my sound pit words would be things like tin, sat, pit, whatever. Here are some green level sound pit words. So sit, pat, tap. Um, and just so you know, what we also do is have the same visual prompts so that the children get to know. They don't have to have extra information that makes it complicated. So they know if they're looking at that, that's representing the word nap, snap, little crocodiles, uh, pat, sip, pants, he's panting in the hot sun, tap, snip. So these are all made up of um, sat pin, but they understand that spin. And they, these also link, you can also, these are also on the USB. Um, if you order the, the actual USB, you also get the animations so that you can put those on whiteboards. So if you imagine they've got this on the whiteboard, these are actually, he's doing press-ups and it's snip, snip, snipping and the taps actually go. So all of these animations actually work. So it brings it all together. So um, basically, just think of a scaffolding approach. It's really, really logical. So you're starting off on the green, where we've got the green level words, the green level sound picks, the helpful words. Then you're moving up to the purple. And again, once you start moving through, you might just have a purple um, folder. And in there, they might have all their purple level sound picks. You know, they might have um, the purple level words in there. So you can get your purple level words that you just cut up and put in. And you know that all of these are made up of the sound picks that they're learning in those levels. So it's really, really logical. Um, For children to be able to spell, they have to have phonemic awareness. Otherwise, it's a waste of time because you're just going to you're just trying to learn, trying to get children to learn um, words or sight words for short, and it's just short term memory, so it's not going to work at all. So, um, don't even bother. Please don't. If a child is struggling with spelling, don't give them more sight words because it's going to be det detrimental. So, if a child is struggling with spelling, normally there's either two things. Normally Um, they, they can't hear, like for example in giggle, that it's g, i, g, o. They can't hear this. They can't hear that it's g, i, g, o. And if they can't hear that, then it's a case of, well, how am I going to know what's going to sit on there? But again, what I want them to do is you want them to go back and say, right, we're going to do this logically and easily. So what we're going to start off with is when we say the words, we're going to do the lines for the speech sounds. And that's all we're going to do. Okay, so g, i, g, o. So if they're okay with sat pin, with all those words, you know, at, put, it, and whatever, 
then you can go on to the purple level and just get all the words and you can create more. I mean, all of the sound picks, let me just show you. So this is a little um, card prompt that you can order. Um, so here are all your green, your purple level sound picks and there are some example words but you can create lots of other ones any words that are created using those sound picks and I say sound picks they're just pictures of speech sounds so um, we can use those words so let's just spell any of those words so what about um, like gap g -ap, fluff or uh, uh, giggle G it g all. So have at least a couple of minutes on the level they're at, just doing the lines for the speech sounds. And please get them to say the sounds as they're doing it. So it might be, and because you're using the same words all the time, they become familiar with it and again they gain confidence. So lamp. So they actually go all a m p. Okay. Now once they're happy with that. You might have just a couple of minutes that, and that you might, then you might say, right, now we're going to do it actually with the letters, actually with the sound picks. Now, I don't say letters, really, because, you know, a letter is really refers to the letter name, and it refers to the alphabet, A to Z, whereas I'm talking about sound picks, which means that it can be more than one letter. It's just whatever it is that represents that particular speech sound. Now, often children don't want to have a record of their failure and that's how they see it so you know just create them something that you can throw away at the end of the session or whatever they want to do okay so we're sticking to an SSP level even if it seems really easy don't worry about that because actually we do want to start with relatively easy because we want to build confidence because we want the build to, to build the confidence of how to spell the words um, the actual process rather than just that particular one word because there are so many words in the English language However, think of, it as sim uh, think of it very simply in that there are only about 45 speech sounds in the English language and there are only about 150 representations of those speech sounds and there they are. So if we teach children how to use this um, approach, we don't have to teach sight words and whatever. We teach helpful words so they can write more meaningful, con con uh, more meaningful sentences at the beginning. But what happens is the children soon start to say, you know, supposing we're in the um, yellow level and we've been you're looking at this what's this a picture this could be a picture of oh or ooh. point to the word point to the picture which picture would you want this is pointing to the heart and this is pointing to the heart and this is pointing to the heart oh look so he's sitting on the book oh so it's so we've got what about this one who thinks they know that one which it could be a picture of oh or a picture of ooh um, so then when we're looking at the word look that's on their thing they would say to them they might say to me oh no I can do that one already because all ook because now I've done the look so now it's not a helpful word because I don't need to learn it by memory and that's the pro that's the process and that's actually why I've got um, in and it 
in the first set of helpful words because the children can also can already do it and in so what what they can so we're already saying oh yes yeah, so these helpful words the words that we use a lot in our english language you can already spell them because you've already learned those representations whereas when you start talking about tricky words and sight words and whatever children think that these are words that you've just got to learn by memory what we want them to understand is that all but about 55 words in the whole of the english language can be decoded if you use ssp so we want children to realize all of these words that we might learn um, as helpful words by memory the majority of them they are going to know how to spell anyway so they don't have to remember them because they're going to be able to actually spell them because they're going to have the skills and that's the thing it's about the skills okay so we're sticking to their level so let's say they're in the purple level so we've done a couple of minutes on let's say the word like man let's do the line mm, ah, mm. get them to put it in a sentence you know, the man was in the field, whatever. Um, close your eyes and visualise a man. What does he look like? You know, just get them to close their eyes and visualise something about that word. Man is a word that they'll understand, but it might come to a word that, like fluff, they might not know what fluff means. So get them to close their eyes and visualise. You might actually get a picture of it to show it to them. Um, and it doesn't matter that you, and next time you're coming back and visualising it, they might visualise it differently and that's fine. Uh, that's, well, that's what you want them to do. But again, because they're coming, they might come back to, that, to it the next day and you say, close your eyes and visualise. Oh, I know what to do now. So we're building that confidence. So we've heard the speech sounds. We've gone, mm, ah, mm. We've visualised, we've talked, put it in a sentence. So then, right now, let's do it, do the lines first, and then let's do it with the, the actual speech sounds, the sound picks. Mm, ah, mm. Mm, ah, mm. And what we want them to try and do is do that fast. So if they've got poor um, letter formation, it might even be that you do, uh, you do it to show them, and then they do it. But you want really them, it's not about neatness, it's about doing it fast. But just so you know, this is why from the beginning, I get children to form letters really quickly and easily from the beginning, and preferably precursive, um, um, ready for cursive. So, mm, ah, mm, so that they can do it quickly. Um, and we learn them in the Greek, you know, we learn them in all the levels with the phrase that's attached to the read, write, ink. So, slither down the snake, round the apple, up down the leaf. So that the children learn how to form it correctly. So instead of, you know, they might, you might not realise that they're going like that for their ends, or they're going like that for their A's. And you don't know that because it might look okay. But when they're doing the phrase, round the apple, up down the leaf, down Nobby, up over his net, they have to do the, or the, the they have to do the, direction correctly so in prep i want them writing i know some of them aren't developmentally ready to be holding pencils really but you know we have we have to have them practicing writing so let's get the, the the direction right first and if they can form those letters quickly it actually helps the spelling because it helps them to be able to go mm, ah, mm. so i'm writing the funny pen so they're doing the sounds as they're doing the writing if they're doing doing it really laboriously mm. Ah, mm. then by the time they've got to the end, they've forgotten what they've done. So let's try and do it quickly. And it might be this is too spaced out. So we might say, right, let's do it a bit closer this time. Mm, ah, mm. Mm, ah, mm. Okay, so speed. So they get used to doing that. So they're building up and they're doing it with the purple level words. And that's all we're going to do. We're going to do it with the purple level sound pick words, with their helpful words. And if they're doing it with their helpful words, then you might just get them to write the helpful. What about and? Ah, and. And even if it's a helpful word they're doing, supposing they haven't, they're on the green level, so they haven't done the d yet. Even if we're learning it as a helpful word, and, still get them to say and. Ah, and. So they're doing the sounds, because that will really help with the brain, modifying those brain networks. Okay, so it's those couple of minutes with the listening and the visualization, whatever. Then we're actually doing that, but we're actually doing the sound picks, saying the word as we're doing it on that level. So once they're happy with that, then you're going to be doing it with, the, with this level. And again, the words, you download them all, and they're actually doing these words. So it might be this, let's do this and thumb. Now I have a thing with, um, 
Which, and you'll see with the children who use the SSP, if they ever see that, you'll see them going like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you. Ah, ah. So it's actually ah. That's an A, that's an A. Ah. No. Mm. What do you think might be for the uh? Um, uh, 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 it could be, what are you there? Uh, 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 the, what's the the sound? This thumb. This thumb. Excuse us both chewing away by the way, it was Christmas and we were having a few chilli beans. Um, now the reason that he's doing this thumb, if you're wondering why I'm saying this thumb and he's looking at his thumb, is because when the children, the children in yellow level have learnt um, <clears throat> that when they see the th, it could be the, they look at, they think of this thumb, it could be the, or it could be th. Now if you just watch carefully as well, when he finishes spelling another, he then wants to spell lolly. So watch what he does. He's actually saying all or or e as he draws those lines. O, 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 E, and then he works out the sound picks. So we've got this thumb. So the, E, S. You might do this thumb. The, E, S, S, A, M. And please don't get caught up with letters. Just get right back to the actual English alphabetic code. And reading and spelling is purely speech. It's talking on paper. This is just talking on paper. So always relate it to speech. Thumb. Th, uh, mm. And I want you to start seeing it as... Th. Oh, sorry, I don't think you can rub this out. Ah! <laughs> so it's not a whiteboard marker. So I want you to always underline th, uh, mm. as many words as you can find everywhere. And help your children do, the, do it as well. So after you've been doing that, you might also get some objects out. And it doesn't matter if it's not on their level. Tell them the word. If you don't tell them the word, I mean, it's like, it makes me laugh when I see some people going, you know, what's, what's this? Well, you don't know until you know what the word is. So if I know that this is small, then I can start figuring it out. And I will write on this because it doesn't matter. So any word at all and investigate it. And if you're not sure, ask me. So small, what can we hear? We can hear s, mm. What's the last sound I can hear? All. Now this one is actually, this is the all sound. All, s, m, all, and again, it, it depends on your pronunciation. Some, you know, in Australia, often you don't hear the all at the end. But breed, b, r, e, d, and that's when you refer back to the clouds. So the all sound, and I want the children to be really quick on knowing which cloud, where the clouds are. So the all sound, they need to very quickly know right where's the, and the more that they use this, the more that they can actually find the right one. So all. So they'll look at the cloud, think, oh, we just, what do we look? Oh, there it is, there's the or. Or, s, m, all, or. So their brains are making that connection. Breed, I might say, quickly, where's the e cloud? And it might be in a couple of different places, because you might have been looking at one representation, and it, we, it might be in two different places. So the e, let's have a look, down here. E, people, m, e, meet. Seat. So where was that E? E. E. Oops, where's it gone? There. E. E. Okay. In anything you see, you know, apple juice. What can you hear in juice? I can hear a J. Oops, can't do it. J. U. There's only three speech sounds, so it must be those. And then if you look at the U. Where's oo? Well, we actually learn oo, oh, oo, in the yellow level. So oo, oh, oo. The oo in juice must be in there. Can you see it? Yes, it's there. There's, um, you know, they're the green level sound picks. S, s, ip, t, i, n. Doesn't have to be. It's not just sat and pin, you know. The, and it doesn't have to be left or right. We want them to follow the speech sounds and blend them into the words. So you tell me, where's the picture for t? Where's the picture for p? Where's the picture for a? Where's the picture for s? Where's the picture for n? Where's the picture for i? Can you do point to sat in the right order? Oh, can you point to nip? 
in the right order. <gasps> right, you ready? I'm going to try and trick you. You ready for this word? <laughs> Spin! Oh, you're amazing! Um, and then inside we've got the visual prompts. So we'll say, oh, spell that word for me. And they know that means that's the one for ant, so they'll go, ah, ant. Sorry, they'll go, ant, ant. That's called duck hands. Ant, ant. That's spelling that. Spin. Sp, i, n. Snap. S, n, ap. And doing the, the duck hands really helps us to see that they do know the sounds. So if they're going sp it n, we know that they're not really understanding it. So go sp it n. Do the duck hands. Okay, so all these little prompts. And so this is the prompt that's got your purple level, your level, yellow level, your blue level. And it's got the example words in as well. So that they can go and, you know, in the car, you can hear them going, ah, oh, ah, oh, car. Or for or for ow cow cow o to o toe. Nobody can do any of the blue. Yes. <gasps> no. no. Who can do the blue? Oh my goodness me, I'm so excited. Are we ready? <gasps> I can't wait. Who's ready? Here we go. <gasps> you need to say the sound. So we want four. What do we want? Four. O. O. Toe. Oyster oil, and they can link those in with the clouds that are on here and have them on their desk. You know, the children need to be able to have them on their desk and be using them regularly so that they don't have to keep asking things and they can work it out for themselves. They might have in the classroom, you might you might have your green um, envelope with all your sound picks for the green, you might have your purple one, your yellow one, your blue one. Have these as well, these um, help the children as well for the reading and the spelling. Let me just get one open green one actually covers our green level and the SSP purple level let me just take purple level words off and the purple level so that covers those and then this one um, covers the yellow level and the blue level so the children can see that they look at that. Now, out of context, how do I know which one it is? Now, they should be able to say to you, it could be oh or ooh. It actually could be uh as well. But um, the one that we focus on is oh ooh. And then they look over there. And they love this one. Poo at the zoo. So, in this context, it's ooh. Poo at the zoo. And it's underlined to show the children. So, there's all sorts of things in here that you can use. You know, on this one, you might have what's on the back. A. Snail in the rain. So let's say we're on the yellow level and we're doing this. Oh, ooh. I might say to them, right, well, let's write poo at the zoo. And we'll do that as a helpful word. So let's do poo at the zoo. Poo at the zoo so we're getting them to spell it and it's a familiar one and if they're not sure just put it there that's fine we're not trying to make it as difficult as possible we're trying to make it as easy as possible so poo at the zoo and but we're making sure that they're putting the speech sound picks on the right lines for the speech sounds poo at the zoo cool. Ow. So that's cut out. 
you do no, down? No, no, do ow. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Ow. No. Just do one to three underneath so I can see which one it is. Do ow. No. Boyd, give me a high five. So use these, the same combination, because there's one of these for all of these speech sounds that it gives the little phrase and shows them whatever all the way through. Then you'll finish off with just a couple of minutes of you might read it or they might read it depending on their level. But the idea is not so much that we're um, just reading the words, it's that we're actually reading the words and letting our brains look at the sound pics. Um, so I might do something like this. All that deep. And get the child to read it with you if they can. All that deep. Deep, deep snow. All that snow had to go. Now close your eyes. I'm going to read it again. So we're not going to look at the print. And this time I'm going to read it again. But I just want you to visualise. I just want you to think about what you can see in your mind. And then you read it to them so that they can't see it. Or they might close their eyes. Um, so I'll show you what they see. So they're closing their eyes. All that deep 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 snow all that snow had to go what did you see what did you think of um, children who find we who don't comprehend very well will struggle with that and it shows you that's what you need to be doing so get rid of all the stimulation and just think about it so they might tell you and whatever we'll talk about it then let's have a look this time this time we're going to read it again and then we're going to look for speech sound pics all that deep 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 snow all that snow had to go and i like using things like dr zeus because it rhymes now again it's really helpful with the with them to to remember you know to to have that that flow and whatever so then i might say oh now listen carefully i'm going to say it and i want you to listen for the e sound now some children it was if they look at that it's going to confuse the issue it's going to confuse them because they've got too much stimulation so some children might say right close your eyes again I'm going to read it, and when you hear E, the E sound, not the lesser name, when you hear this E sound, I want you to tell me, and you might do it slowly, you might go, all that deep, <gasps> did you hear the E? So we're trying to get them to hear it, so this is the phonological awareness, so we're not bothered about what it means at this particular point, because we're listening for the speech sounds, not um, their understanding or the word or anything to do with this actual context at all, we just want them to hear those sounds. All that deep. Did you hear an E? Yes, I heard one of them in the middle of E. Deep. All that deep, deep, deep snow. How many times have you heard it now? So all that deep, deep, deep snow. We can hear it three times. All that deep, deep, deep. So we've heard it three times now. Let me finish it off then. All that deep, deep, deep snow. All that snow had to go. So we heard it three times and then you might choose a different sound. Are you ready, Nicholas? Hold on. Okay, rewind. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Where's the ooh sound? To ooh. And where's another ooh sound? But look, ooh, you're too clever. Are you ready? I'm going to trick you this time. Black fish, blue fish, old fish, new fish. Where's the coo? Where's the sh? Oh, where's another sh? Where's another sh? Where's another sh? Where's another sh? Where's an oo? Where's an oo? New. Ah, oh, you're too clever. This one has a little star. This one has a little car. Say what a lot of fish there are. Where's an ah? There's an ah. Where's another ah? Don't worry about the context of whatever because at the moment we want to develop that visual imagery but then we also want to then get develop that concept of oh okay so when I'm doing that I can hear those speech sounds now the next thing I want you to do is okay let's look for it let's look for that E sound let's see it all that deep so now you get the child to write the picture for the E sound and it's there so they can look at it um, and if you've got it laminate, if you've got something laminated, they could underline it on there. But they can do the E. Okay, there's the E. Deep, deep snow. Have we got a different E yet? No, it's still the same one. So you might have what, you know, it might have been something like um, leap, in which case then they found another one. So they can put it there. Then you might link it with the E. Okay, let's have a look at our, our E. And that's in the green level. E. <laughs> 
Let's have a look at the E. Which ones did we see? We saw that one, E. And we might have seen that one if it was leap. So again, we're linking it with the clouds. And what they'll do is they'll start to remember where they are. And then you might just read the book to them for pleasure and whatever, and that's fine. So in about 15 minutes, you've covered an awful lot of skills that are going to really help them with their spelling. Now, if you're in a classroom, ideally you need to have a sound pick bank. So um, there's a cloud for every speech sound, like I said before. So here are the pictures for... So you've got the sound pick bank. So when a child is saying, you know, elephant, which is the f in elephant, you can say to them, if they know letter names, then you can go the PH. If not, this is why it's got the numbers underneath, because this is for my preppies. So in preppies, I'll say, oh, it's the number two. So they go and they get the number two for elephant. So they've done the lines, or they've already done elephant. Sorry, <laughs> let me do it again. Elephant. Elephant. And they might, because it hit, because you hit unt, they might have put the a uh, just there. And then I, um, so the er or e f unt, so they're saying to me, which one is it? Or they might have already done that one. And I might say to them, oh, you know what? The king would say, yay! The king would say, yay! And the king is um, somebody that we use a lot who is just, or he knows the whole of the English alphabetic code. So he'll say, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. The different picture for f there, different picture for uh, uh, for uh, there, different pi um sorry, and they're all right. So the f Go to the speech sound bank and can you please instead get me the number two. In prep again they often have to actually take it to their tables because they can't remember it from, you know, looking at it there to by the time they get to the table. So they take it with them so then they can change it. Et or if. Okay, let's change it. Sorry, imagine I'm rubbing it out. And then that one. And then for the uh, I would say, let me look at the cloud. Where's the uh cloud? Purple level. Uh. And then I'll say to them, well, this is the one that we've been learning, but actually an elephant, and I might actually show them the word. So I'll say, it's not that one. Let me show you which one it is. E or E. It's this one. So now you're going to have a look in the uh cloud. And just check that there is a picture there for uh that looks like it. There you go. There it is. That one. So don't, you don't need to worry about spelling rules or whatever, or why is that sound like elephant, but it's that. Because what we're doing is we're helping children to discover it themselves. And also, the, the quicker they read and spell, the quicker they'll see whether it looks right or not. And they might do that because that's what it sounds like, and then they change it. When people say to me they're still f spelling phonetically, what that means is they're really trying to hear the speech sounds, which is brilliant, but you haven't taught them all the sound picks, or whoever's teaching them hasn't taught them all the sound picks. So when, children, when people say to me that they're spelling phonetically, um, that's actually a, a good sign to me because it means what they're doing is really trying to do what we're trying to teach them here. So supposing they did, oh, I don't know, um, snacks. So what they might do is they might do mm, ah, k, s, snacks. Or they might put two S or whatever. So that's brilliant. They've gone mm, ah, k, and then what we say to them is, oh, let me show you something. That's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. This one just needs changing for a different sound pick. Where's the k? And the k is in the purple level. So we'll look at the k. Just here. K, k. There's a cloud for k. And there's a song for k. So what we'll say to them, it's going to be one of these. Let me show you which one it is. It's actually mm, ah. It's actually this one. And then as I say, double check, snack, is it in there? Yes, it is, hooray. Um, and so that whole process means that you're building um, confidence, building independence, and to help the brain, if you really wanted to cement that snacks, then get them to do seven times. Sorry, I've changed my K there. Snacks. Mm, ah, snacks. Mm, ah, snacks. So the brain is going over again and repeating, and the brain is going, mm, ah, and that's really helping. Do it seven times. So please remember before you do anything, go back to the green level. 
and just check their phonemic awareness. So just check that they can. Tell them what those words are. You can get these individually and whatever. But, you know, um, nap or naps. Tan. It's a turtle getting a tan. Some tan has got some kind of cream on. So tan, sip, pin, snap, pit. It's a sand pit. Um, pat, nip, pat, nap, pants, because his pants fall down. Um, tap, pan, ant, spin. So just check that when you look at those, that they can do the duck hounds. So spin, that they do do s, p, e, n, and they can hear those. What you can also do is you give them the sounds they've got to point to the word. So you might go um, p, an, so that they've got to point to it. T, ap. Oh, and there's another one. N ip sn ap. So that they can do it that way around as well. If they struggle with that, they're going to they need more work on the phonemic awareness before we start to really look at the print because that's the underlying foundation and that is the most and the the phonemic awareness is the biggest predictor of reading failure. So before you start even looking at the print and the representations of those speech sounds, they have to be able to do this. And there's a card for teacher card for every level for the phonemic awareness always go back to that and check that and anyway, I hope that's been useful okay so remember green level sorry that's just a prompt and we play bingo and all sorts of stuff with that um so the green level got all the stuff on there one for the green level your helpful words that we're going to learn your purple level don't forget to download your words that are for the purple level your yellow level and your blue level don't forget your words. And here's your condensed version. Have that on the table. Visual prompts. Visual prompts. If you've got any questions, let me know. Oh, I've also got now that you can actually order this and these two at the same time as a package to just to save you having to order them separately. Um, it's $60, um, including precision packaging for these within Australia. Um, and so just ask for the link or find the link on the speedyssp.com website um, but this is all you need if you've got a laptop so you can play these play the songs play the animations the whiteboard session you know lessons it's also got videos on all sorts of things so if you've got these two in this this is pretty much all you need as long as you keep watching and seeing that you know about the ssp approach this is pretty much all you need if you've got a really limited bu budget um because what i'm suggesting to people if there's a library in your area is that you ask me and i'll send the i'll send you the resource list for your library because if your library can order a whole set of the readers that follow the ssp order then that means that the readers you have readers that follow this order they build up and build up and build up so by the time they get to here they're reading fluently and confidently and for comprehension um, because they're scaffolding but ask me about that um, and if you can get your library to do it then obviously again you don't have to pay anything it means you can just go and get the right books in order and whatever again if you're a class teacher and your school hasn't got a budget for buying the decodable readers that follow this get them at your library because then your children can get them at your library anyway email me emma at readaustralia.com